Sam is um, the director of the real estate division of LJ Partnership uh, with responsibility for the UK city's investment strategy. Now, as far as I can work out, that means he's a property developer with a passion for rebuilding uh, the ancient ruins and restoring the places long devastated. Um, so, uh, Sam. The alternative to that is an awful finance person. <laughs> You're basically, as I've just said, a property developer. So tell me um, a bit about. <laughs> so tell me a bit about um, the amazing buildings that you are restoring, and your vision for the bricks and mortar. Yeah, so that, that's um, in a simple way. That's exactly what um, we do at, at the UK Cities Fund, which is to buy incredible old, either historic or strategic buildings like this. And I think there's some on the next slide as well. Um, and uh, in cities around the UK, so particularly Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds, Bristol. So um, trying to play our part in building the Northern Powerhouse, the Midlands Engine, and I don't know what Bristol's part of, Western something. Um, and uh, yes, that's what I do. And I um, will show a couple of slides later on, but basically um, do them up and then lease them out to businesses. Fantastic. These are, there's another slide just come up as well. So for you um, to have this vision, though, Sam, we were talking the other day, and it comes from somewhere, and uh, it comes from somewhere deeply personal to you. Can you just talk us through that a little bit so you know, we can get beyond just the property development and actually understand you as a person? Yeah, sure. This is, this is actually a building I didn't... Um, sorry, yeah, stay on the, uh, the cabin. Um, this wasn't part of my, my business, but this is what got me into property. Um, so I left university and had absolutely no idea what to do. Um, my father's um, an artist and a worship leader, and I decided I was going to rebel against him and go into business. Um, and, uh, and I was asked by a cousin to go and help build this cabin. And um, I'm very proud of it, even though all I really did was put the little brick pieces on the bottom left-hand corner, um, and it took about a month. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I knew that um, I wanted to go into business and I wanted to go into something really tangible. And um, so that's sort of how I got into to property. Um, but uh, I, I suppose what I've been exploring over the last few years is how to not live a separated life between my business and church and family. And, and we'll come to that in a minute. But um, so, yeah, this, this, I'm, I'm pleased that someone else has slides with two by twos and four by fours and, um, and sort of diagrams like this. But, um, Do you want to just flip back, Nate, to the previous slide? Okay, yeah, so I, yeah, I, I want to live this sort of integrated life. And, and, and I suppose what this slide represents is um, the church that I'm a part of and, and um, uh, networked with um, the likes of, of David and Philippa. Um, there's incredible kind of courses and um, uh, apps and all sorts of kind of input, Christian input, which is in absolutely incredible and helps um, with, with my daily life and business. But I sometimes get overwhelmed by committing to um, numerous kind of uh, rhythms. And, and so recently I've, I've actually had to strip all of that back and just going to pray, praying the Lord's Prayer every day at midday. So I, when um, I was chatting with Sam, I said to him, Sam... Just talk me through this. It is not, I mean, I don't know how many of you at lunchtime set an alarm on your phone to pray the Lord's Prayer. But uh, we got chatting about it. Can you just unpack that a little for people? I think um, it was about simplification for me. And I, I suppose I was struggling with um, trying to work really hard, help at church, help in charity, other, other areas. Um, and needed to simplify. And um, Pete Gregg, I think it was, ch uh, sort of put this challenge out a few years ago just to, um, uh, basically a call to prayer every day. And the incredible thing about technology is that um, I put that reminder in my iPhone and now it shows up everywhere, on my phone, on my iPad, at my desk. It sort of buzzes all over and it forces me just daily to basically pray the prayer. And I very often don't get through the whole prayer, even though it's so short but I kind of get a bit stuck at thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And I think positively stuck, hopefully. 
um, and so I've been working out um, in, in my life. And that's um, led to much more of the development of an integrous vision, because you, I mean, like, we're always trying to get you to do things, and you're brilliant, because actually you say, no, Philippa. And, that's uh, Katrina that, that's, telling me so. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's just such an art. Can you tell me about some of that life discipline that you have put in to help you achieve exactly what you are, in fact, achieving, which is phenomenal? I, um, I think... I've been working for 12 or 13 years, and I get very excited by new businesses and new ideas and new initiatives. And so I, I'm, and part of it is just, um, I think, the way I'm built and excitement about um, creating, which is, I think, probably from the artistic side of my family. But also a little bit over the last 12 years was just trying to be a hero and say yes to everything. And I realized that spanned me out, and I got involved in too many things. So again, pulled it all back. And I'm trying to, um, using that kind of thy kingdom come, or I think a lot of people talk about it as sort of having ki kingdom impact, but across the kind of four key areas of my life, which are family, business, charity, and church, and sort of trying to live in that central space, if that doesn't sound too odd. That's, uh, I found it really inspiring when we were chatting. But you also have established some key principles for your business. And um, I, know, I know you, we, we worked together a bit on modern day slavery, so I know some of the principles that underpin uh, your approach to life and your passion for those who are most disadvantaged. Can you just unpack those, those principles a little? Yeah, I think as a business, we've been really searching um, how not to live a life of trying to kind of nail it at work and make as much as possible and then give it, over, give it away separately over there, but make sure that our projects um, really genuinely have social and environmental impact, positive impact. Um, and I don't know if we've got a slide next of yeah, what we're doing. So at a kind of physical level, um, we are taking properties that are kind of down and out and undermanaged. Um, and what we really love doing is, is revealing the history in them. So really stripping them back to the original history of that building. And, and we sort of um, internally, the, the, the believers amongst us, you know, talk about going to the original design of those buildings and the real DNA of those buildings and, and going back to that and revealing that history, um, which is why we love old buildings in particular. And I think part of that is uh, there's, a, there's a sort of interior design trend, particularly in offices, of faking quite, quite a lot. And you see you know, fake brick everywhere. And there are office developers putting in fake iron columns to make it more warehousey and that sort of thing. And, and whilst aesthetically that kind of works, I think you actually walk into those spaces and you know deep inside that actually something's being faked. And so we've sort of made some rules for ourselves not to, not to fake it, to find what the original parts of the building are, um, so it's real that people that work in it actually feel inspired by that space. And, and I think deep inside they know that we're kind of caring for the building and restoring it hopefully in the right way. But you're more than features. about buildings, aren't you? Because actually, once you've restored these buildings, you also have a passion for community. Yeah. How does that work out in these incredible buildings? Well, we, we're... We're exploring um, another kind of positive trend in, in our market um, is of, of community. So you see the likes of WeWork and, and lots of co-working spaces and, and um, you know, managed workspaces like that, which is great. And I think we've got an incredible advantage. I always talk about the, the um, unfair advantage of the Holy Spirit in what we do, but also the unfair advantage of, I think, really understanding community as the church. And so we're, in our commercial um, buildings, we're trying to make sure that, as I said, the environmental impact is, is positive. So in Manchester, for example, we're putting rainwater harvesting. It rains a lot in Manchester. So we're, we're harnessing the rain, um, which we're using in the buildings. Um, but also, uh, in terms of our supply chain, um, we've become a living wage employer and trying to become a B Corp and others, kind of basically not exploiting people that we work with. Um, and then in terms of community, we basically love throwing parties. So we, we throw parties in our buildings and we, and we really try and build community between the tenants. So we found in one scenario, we had two buildings that are about 100 meters apart. The tenants had been there for 10 or 15 years and they'd never heard of each other. And so we kind of put on lunches and parties and try and build community amongst our, our resident businesses, but also really crucially and something that we're only just starting to learn how to do, but to link the people in our buildings with the needs of that city. Um, so rather than arriving from London and saying, oh, wouldn't it be great if you supported this charity? 
which I don't think is a very sustainable thing and, and doesn't look quite right. Um, but actually, um, we've tried to isolate what are the real needs of each of the cities where we're investing and then linking the resident businesses with those needs and, and supporting the charities that our tenants want to support. Sam, can, can we just say a huge thank you? Just hearing the passion in your heart, but also how you are outworking that and the discipline. And I know you, you and Katrina have not been married for that long and we're just so amazingly proud of everything that you are doing. So can we just cheer you on and just say thank you for being such a role model in what you're doing. Thank, thank you for you. the encouragement. Thank you.